Welcome to the Get Your Writing Done podcast. I'm Trevor Thrall, author of the 12 Week Year for Writers. Writers are a particular bunch. We like to have things just right when we get down to business. Some of us have trouble even getting anything done at all if things aren't just right. For me, writing is definitely easier when I love my setup and have my favorite tools close to hand. Okay, I'll admit it. I'm fussy. I have a favorite pen, a favorite journal, a favorite computer, and a favorite writing app just for starters. And if you're anything like me, you've spent hours and hours experimenting with all the different tools out there, looking for ways to make your writing even easier and even more enjoyable. If I haven't tried a writing-related tool yet, it's probably just because I haven't heard of it. Given my obsessions, one of my goals with this podcast is to talk with the people who make the tools of the trade. Today I'm chatting with Max Zaleman, Executive Director of Ulysses, my favorite writing app. I used Ulysses to write my book, for example, and I recommend giving it a go if you're not thrilled with your current writing app. In this episode, we talk about how Ulysses was born, how it has evolved with input from writers, and the future of online writing. Max, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Thank you for Fantastic. having me. Fantastic. Yes. Now, I, I've, I've told people in the introduction that I am a huge fan of the Ulysses app. So we'll just get that out of the way right away. So this is a <laughs> fan interview. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm really curious, you know, um, there are uh, so many different apps out there, um, maybe more now than there used to be when you guys started. But where did you get the idea to develop Ulysses in the first place? Um, so the story I always tell, which is like 90% true, is that my co-founder, Marcus, uh, he wanted to write a novel and uh, he's been looking for writing apps. And uh, to quote him, he's only been finding apps for secretaries, which he meant Word, and developers, by which he meant BB edit, <laughs> and nothing that was aimed at writing. And that's why he came up with his own idea for a writing app. But that's like 2000 and one or 2002 ish so it's a while ago <laughs> a long time ago yeah. and then and then he he built something right that wasn't quite ulysses uh he well he came up with an idea and realized he couldn't build it himself mm. and then he found me on the internet uh i i was still in high school and uh he's been asking to find someone who could do it and i was like well i could try um and that's how we got, how we got we started going, and um, yeah, we've been doing it ever since. And it's always been called Ulysses. So we've like oh, had like iterations. Yeah. yeah, it's always been called Ulysses. Um, yeah, named after the novel from James Joyce, right? Like yeah. it's it's regarded as like one of the most important novels of the 20th century. And we were like, well, we're doing a writing app. That's the right the right target to aim for right <laughs> i like that's a good north star to have in mind absolutely absolutely so what what makes ulysses great for writers that other apps weren't so good at well back in that at that time originally it was like um organizing a project and um being plain text only that was real a novelty back then for for writing apps um and uh well back like a step back from where the industry had gone and and nowadays it's like the entire set so it's uh it's a it's a one tool for you to do everything in in terms of writing starting from idea sourcing collecting thoughts like from websites or just writing down notes and then organizing them then you have a, a clean focused writing environment where like everything fades away and you're just forced to write um, the blinking cursor on the empty screen, right? Screaming, like start typing. <laughs> and, uh, then of course you have like, like the organization again to uh, assemble your project. Uh, so if it's a smaller one, then you have many snippet, just maybe yeah, iterations like blog posts or so on. And if you have a novel, then you have chapters or parts of chapters. So you can organize that. And in the end you can export it and, uh, bring it to a variety of formats like, mm -hmm directly published to a blog or uh, submitted as a word file to your editor or yeah, printed as a PDF file or something. Yeah. I think the evolution of writing applications is fascinating to me. And I, I'm, I'm an older person, so I've seen all of them. 
And <laughs> you know, when I was in college, I, I had one of the early Macintosh computers that would sit on your desk and it had a little 512K disk drive. And I carried around on one floppy disk, Microsoft Word, the program, and everything <laughs> I wrote in college combined on one disk. <laughs> And then sort of almost immediately after that, Microsoft Word and every other program that got invented, WordPerfect, which had already been going, bloated into these crazy, ridiculous programs yes. uh, that won't hardly fit on your computer anymore. And, and yet you guys went with something that was as simple as what they started with. What, why? why, why it, it's, yeah, it's, I think, it, yeah, it's basically a, a counter trend, right? So like um, realizing that, uh, some tools may have went too far and uh, is, it may, I mean even today you get some of those new written newly written shows they are written in word perfect or something like <laughs> really from, from the days because uh, those were the tools uh, uh, to write for so many yeah um, I don't I don't know exactly what was the yeah what what, what was the motivation I think Marcus has always been someone who has been very deep on, on uh, usability and, and like uh, what are the tools that we need? Uh, what is superfluous? What could, can be left away? And what's really, what's really at the core. And it's always been like, yeah, and he's always been like driven by that and, and wanted to, to create something. Actually, he's also never written that book, right? <laughs> Did the project, Ulysses got too big and he had to work on that instead. Yeah, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. That's very funny. So one of the things that also makes Ulysses different from, or at least Microsoft Word and that sort of app is Markdown, which, you know, mm -hmm. as soon as I said that, 53 people just turned off their, you know, headset. <laughs> because they're like, that sounds technical. Um, but I, I think sort of the, the flip side of being as simple as it is when you're looking at it and writing it, it, it does require something to help integrate it with the rest of the world. So tell me a little bit about the decision to do Markdown and, and what that means for how you use the app. So the, um, well, the, the idea behind Markdown is plain text writing so that uh, everything you do with the text is just written. There's no formatting bars, no buttons and nothing. So um, you only write some characters to add emphasis uh, or denote a heading. You know, sorry, <laughs> I have to take a sip. So all you do is um, um, denote emphasis or, or, or uh, say what, what is a heading and what is a, maybe a comment. And the, and the idea is that you never take your fingers away from the keyboard and all you do is just stay on the keyboard. And if you want to undo something, you just need to delete button, no commands needed. And yeah, it really helps you clean up the interface so that all you, all you have is really just the text, like writing on a typewriter. You don't have tools on a typewriter. You don't have like a, I mean, you could do bold on a typewriter by going back and typing it again, but that's really like the core of the typewriter is just being able to type. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and by that, you force yourself into churning out words and you cannot distract yourself because there is no way to distract yourself. So that is like the, like, like, yeah, the, the, the very core idea is to be able to focus by not being able to unfocus. Yeah, yeah. So now I'm curious, it sounds like, you know, Marcus, when he sort of first got this idea, you know, it was a personal sort of uh, thing for him, like what he needed. But Ulysses is obviously, what are we on? Ulysses 22 now? Is that what's just been released, version 22? And it's a We're lot different. 24. <laughs> 24, my God, I can't yeah. even track. And, and it's added a lot of things since then, hopefully not too many. But um, where, where did you guys like come up with the sort of development path? Did you, you know, sort of do surveys? Did you just you know, think of the next thing you were thinking of? How did you guys get it to where it is now? Um, we were happy enough to have users uh, from the very beginning. We had a beta uh, before we launched. We had people testing it. And we've always had plenty of feedback. Uh, so much feedback that we never like had the feeling we need to go out and look for more input. It was like, well, it's too much already. Yeah. We already need to like, 
look at what feedback is the most important and which feedback we don't need. Right. Mm -hmm. And then um, you need to know that uh, our user base are writers. So they happily write long emails with a lot of things in them. <laughs> so it's not, <laughs> it's not like, it's not like uh, an instant messaging app where people write short things. It's like they, they li like to write a lot and write to like often. And so we have so much feedback and then we like, yeah, we dig through it and we'd like to um, yeah, make a, make a sense of what different people tell us and uh, uh what usually what's usually so one thing we always do is like people usually come at you and say hey i want xyz so they they uh, i need this and that function and then what we do is we look at what they want and we go a step back into what is their need so what is the problem they are trying to solve and then but from there we take it ourselves so so we we look at all the feedback and we take from that the underlying problems what what do you need to do um, not what is the solution you propose, but what is what is what is at the core, and from that we develop our own idea. Yeah. Yeah. It might happen that we end up with something that was proposed, but like we started with the problem and then went from there. Right on. So, what are the um, sort of features? Do you think that your writing users like the most? What do they What do they tell you they like the most anyway? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> I would say all of them. <laughs> no, um, I would certainly say the like the full screen mode, so where you just really just have a blank screen and the cursor and your text. And uh, they like a lot the library that helps them organize, so it's flexible, yet allows like giving yourself enough structure that you can you can yeah, yeah make yourself home at there. And then it being synced to all the devices so that even when you're on the go uh, in the subway, have an idea, you can just open your project and write it down right next to your project. Yeah. Or that you can uh, review text while you're not at home or uh, on the plane and so on and so forth. So this, this flexibility that like your, your writing is always where you are. Um, yeah, and then of course the uh, one one thing that's really beloved by many users is the is the publishing feature, like mm -hmm. publishing directly to the blog and um, having all those projects together in one place. Yeah, so that you don't need to think about like what 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 a lot of lot of our users happen to 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 experience a situation where they are are like, well, I want to write down this thought, and they don't need to ask themselves, where do I go to write it down? Because all their writing is in Ulysses. They automatically go there and then they can organize it later on. Yeah, yeah. So one of the things I wonder is, do you ever worry about getting to putting too many things in Ulysses? It, does it end up feeling like you're risking becoming Microsoft Word the next generation? Um. I mean, it's it's a valid fear, of course. I mean, that's that's a valid fear. I would say for every product, because uh, it's every software product, because you most of the time you're writing. What we try to do though is, whenever we add something, to simplify what is there even more, mm -hmm. so that like the the result is never more complicated than what we had before. So that's um, that's a tough thing to do, right? So you like really, really need to chew on the details. You really, really, really need to like, ah, uh, I want to add a setting. So if I want to add the setting, I need to get rid of another setting. And 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 then which setting can I get rid of? Uh, maybe I can get rid of two settings and only add one. So then uh, net, I, own, I, I remove one setting while adding one. So like that, this is, this, is the, this is the train of thought that we always try to do. Doesn't work out 100% of the time, but really, but by really chewing on things and trying to be smart about uh, what we need to offer and uh, what's maybe not so important, um, I would say we we have been very successful in in, in that strategy and and not having things become too complicated. Yeah. Well, I, I was I was uh, stalking your your Twitter feed, the company's Twitter feed this morning. And, you know, there are just a lot of super fans out there 
And I think one of the things that was most obvious just this morning, scrolling through a couple hundred tweets was that people really do love how beautiful the interface is and how clean. And I, you know, I, I, I'm a big writing setup kind of wonk and I, I love like get, making sure my keyboard is exactly the right thing, the monitors and all that sort of stuff. And, and the app that you're staring at is, is one of the biggest parts of that whole thing. And so for me, you know, that, that's really critical. Um, but one of the things I also noticed when I was looking at these tweets is that a lot of, I mean, clearly people have other tools they need to use to get whatever the kind of writing they're doing is done. What other tools do you see people sort of like what kind of workflows do you see people sort of using Ulysses as part of? Like they might have some other tools or stuff, but it seems like you guys, like there are a lot of people doing creative things with uh, Ulysses out there. Um, so one, one thing a lot of people do is before they write, they uh, like organize their thoughts and they happen to do some, some do it in Ulysses, but some uh, prefer outlining apps like MindNote or XMind or something. And where they just like, yeah throw everything at and then later import it into the app and um yeah then obviously you have like a lot of post-processing do it being done for um yeah, people that publish books where they send out a word file and the publisher then does other things but also for self-publishing there's tools that post-process um for example in and uh, uh already formatted epub file into uh, these Amazon Kindle Kindle uh, files, and um, then we have an integration with uh, Timeline. Um, uh, how is it called? Oh God, Aon Timeline, which is an which is an app that helps you uh, organize the history uh, of a novel. For example, if you're writing a historical novel, then you have like a lot of things happening at certain dates and certain places. And then you have like a, a visual timeline editor that then syncs to Ulysses with the time and places. So for you to organize, uh, your, your writing on then, and, um, uh, then there's people doing presentations in Ulysses. Mm. For example, you can write, you can, you can write, uh, maybe basically just a markdown text and then send it, um, to uh, a presentation app. Uh, give me a second for the name. Um, uh, uh, damn it. <laughs> um, so, so, but but there, 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 is, uh, there, are, there are apps that make uh, from a markdown file, yeah. they make a presentation. That's neat. Which you then can put up as, as slides. Um, so uh, you can even do your presentations inside Ulysses. Right. And, uh, yeah. and see, that, that's so nice because I think one of the things that, that you know, Microsoft Word is, is great. It, it does, eight, it's a Swiss army knife. You can probably do anything there is to be done with it if you can stomach learning how to do that. But what it doesn't do in my mind anyway is make other things easier. And I think that's what you guys have focused on. That's so cool is that, you know, the, from the simple interface, being able to end up doing multiple different things without, since you already did the markdown, it's done. You, you sort of write mm -hmm. once and use many times, which I think is, is very logical. And uh, that's yeah. a big winner for me. Um, I'm curious, you, you've been doing this a long time now. And I, I know I'm going to ask you in a minute about your support of the writing community, which you guys are great about, but what have you learned about, writing or the writing process or maybe about writers since you started this project? I mean, you guys interface with a lot of writers. I may have learned some good things, some bad things. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> um, I already said that they, are, that they really like to write and write emails, <laughs> right? <laughs> that's, that's, I would say that's the, um, it's, a, it's an obvious and still uh, yeah, yeah, interesting learning, right? That's, yeah. it's not, Writers are not limited to their craft. They they spread their their yeah uh, how to say verbosity <laughs> everywhere, um, uh, and then um, I would say about the process. Uh, one thing we only recently like really dug into and realized is that all writing processes sort of are similar, right? You start with an idea, you then gather maybe some material, uh, do research, and then you write a draft, you review it, and maybe you send it out for someone else to review. So, but there's, there's, there's a process that every text goes through and for different kinds of texts and different places, this process, each stage might be very different. 
but the process itself is always it feels like at least in our view that the process is very similar in structure mm -hmm. so it's not like um uh, that you uh, that, yeah, well that you publish first and and have the idea last but right. <laughs> of course you, you always have the idea first and, and publish last yeah. and so on so that is um yeah, that is something that that is that is a realization that only came very late, I would say, <laughs> because we uh, we didn't we didn't think about it before. But uh, we hope to be making more of that realization in the future and and to streamline the app even more um, right. Right. towards that process. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, for yeah, because when you think about the marketplace of other kinds of apps that writers might use, there are some that are focused on the idea gathering and information yeah. gathering phase. There's a lot of note-taking apps, for example. Mm -hmm. and then there's some writing apps and then there's sort of publishing apps. And, and I, yeah, I mean, it seems like you guys have got your heads around all those phases. Yeah, we try, we try to aim to, to, to uh, yeah, represent the entire process as much as basic, I would say is feasible. Yeah. I mean, we can't do every niche process, yeah. but we can uh, have interfaces for every niche process, mm -hmm. which is the markdown files we just talked about, like the presentations and uh, all, all the other all the other integrations. Um, and and but what we we will use this uh, this idea of the process to look at where do we have gaps, right? Where can where can you start and end in Ulysses, but there's a gap in between, uh, which might force you out of out of the app. And we try to, yeah, we try to have a solid base on 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 the entire process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, no, that's excellent. So I, I did mention I wanted to sort of get your take on your support for the writing community. You guys do writing contests. You you know interview and sort of promote people. T tell me a little bit about why you guys do that and and sort of what you learned about that. Um, I I feel like um, I. I feel like it's it's important to show that um, the apps are not just about the interface and not about like programming them, but that there's real people using them, and that it in the end it's about uh, yeah the written content and and it's about um, yeah yeah the people behind it and and showing that there's many different ways people use a writing app um, that there are many different backgrounds of people be writing books i mean we have we've we, on our blog we have a lot of interviews we've had people that hiked the entire world and people that run uh at diving schools on on, on a remote island that, uh, and people that quit their day job to become a writer and uh, people that uh, happen to uh, have stumbled into writing and, and others that uh are that, that do really crazy things. We have like uh, TV uh, TV hosts that write their, their 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 show scripts in it, and yeah. and 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 so it's really the, the writers the writer scene is really diverse. It's and and people write everywhere, and at at many occasions. And we hope to be able to give a, give a picture of that. And with the with the contest also, we had our hope was to give yeah to give some exposure. To people that might never have been been given exposure to, and um, we ran it anonymously, and uh, so it was really just we just looked at the text, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of those that 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 won uh, and and were in the, in, like in the, in the yeah in, in the final round and got in the top ten and uh, got a prize. They uh, said they they've never won a prize before, so That's it's awesome. um, so it was their first time to to be seen by others and. Um, that's yeah. awesome. That's a good feeling. That's a really good feeling. So a uh, totally different topic. Which country has the most Ulysses users per capita? I would say the U.S. Still because the US. we yeah. have yeah. Uh, still the U.S. Um, it's still like 45 or something percent of our users wow. are from the U.S., um, and that's that's difficult to top on a on a per capita <laughs> on a per capita basis. Um, Where are some other yeah. countries that are are big? The, yeah, the, yeah, there are other countries that are big, but on a per capita basis, I would say it's still the U.S. So, um, in, in absolute numbers, it's U.S. And uh, U.S. is fairly fairly large, so maybe some very very like I don't know. 
uh, some island country might <laughs> might have <a> higher <laughs> might have a higher share per capita. Yeah, but uh, in total, it's the US. Yeah, I would say it's mostly to be attributed to Apple's market share. I mean, we're exclusive on on Apple's platform, and App- Apple's market share in the US is is well, representation in the US is very massive, yeah. and uh, yeah. Yeah. Now that so, why did you guys choose to be a Mac only? Not that I'm complaining, obviously, but uh, I would say it it used to be by accident in the beginning, and now it's it's a decision. Um, so it used to be an accident in the beginning because my parents had Macs. They uh, are architects, and architects uh, in the like, in the early 2000s they used to have Macs. Mm-hmm. And one of the few last people remaining that were regular Mac users, uh-huh. and um, Marcus also he was uh, in a in a uh, advertis- advertisement agency, and uh, so he he's been a graphic artist uh, before. And nowadays, I would say it's um, the creative people and people that like. Are willing to pay for ease of use and and that that they see value in well designed apps. I would say they are drawn towards the Apple platforms. They're drawn towards iPhone and they're drawn towards Mac. So if you really if you want the, like the, the the easiest to use devices and and ease of use and and yeah and, and feeling good is core of Apple and our philosophy. Um, that's 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 the best match and uh and like in, in terms of business it's it's very like the, the math is very simple so um for example if you take android my, i mean there's roughly like really really rough like uh calculation but there's like 10 times the android devices and the worldwide sales is like half so the average willingness to pay per user is five percent of that of an ios iphone user mm-hmm. so and for us uh, that are selling, uh, well, most, yeah, I mean, that, that was what makes Ulysses unique is like the, the ease of use and and the, and uh, the feature set, and um, it's a premium product, um, so that is just right on the iOS platform. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. Creators tend to gravitate towards the Mac <laughs> ecosystem, and that makes it a very good fit. Uh, you know, but speaking of the ecosystems, you know, the internet has obviously just changed the sort of nature of writing a lot, it seems like in the last, I mean, even just five years, 10 years, um, you know, do you see a, a role or is Ulysses part of that? Do you see, where, where do you see the future of, of writing online going and, and, you know, do you think writing apps play a, a role there? I definitely see that we are getting a lot of competition, right? So, um, and that everybody tries to be more elaborate on their on their usability. Mm-hmm. So, if you look at, for example, just as an, just an example, WordPress. They used to have a, a, yeah a nice backend where you could write some text, but they've like last two in the last two or three years they've switched to a new system that is much easier to use. Um, and 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 uh, yeah, but it's, it's compared to where they came from, right? It's much easier to use. So you get you get those, those movements from all the sides, and then we have a lot. You have a lot of um, startups that are that are going into the notes area, the personal notes area, and the writing area, and they are all just building on web technologies. So there's a lot of competition coming from coming from the web, and in terms of publishing, it's obvious that like. All, all news is online nowadays, right? Uh, paper, paper news are are uh, going away. Don't know if they're going to be around in twenty years. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, likely, much, much fewer of them. And um, so, all the, all this publishing is going to become more online, and uh, all the submissions going to be online. I mean. I mean, probably they probably are already, right? Nobody sends their manuscript in a in a printed form to their publisher nowadays. It's all digital, and so um, yeah, and and so this trend that that we're seeing with everything going online, we've also like helped with by integrating publishing. Like fifteen years ago, um, it wasn't like a lot of people were blogging and a lot of news sites, news sites were running on WordPress, for example. But nowadays, a lot of sites run on WordPress. Even the biggest news sites on the internet, um, some of them run on 
readily available tools and Ulysses can integrate with them. And so that's, um, I think that's more where it's going. And it's gonna be interesting to see if there's gonna be a standard towards publishing, which I'm not not yet aware of. Um, like every publisher, they, they still have like their, their, their closed processes, um, but it might happen that there's, a, there's an open format coming. Um, for self-publishing, we've seen that already. We've, we have people that um, self-publish eBooks directly from the app. So uh, even, a, even a colleague of ours, she's a writer and she's written, she's written a book and she's published the eBook right from the app. So with no changes made. Um, she used her own product to write the book. You can't really ask for more than that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's all digital, right? That's yeah. like. Fantastic. So, so let's wrap up and let me ask you, where is Ulysses headed? What's, what's the next sort of big thing you're excited to do with Ulysses? What's, what's on the docket? So, uh, so one thing we're working on, uh, which is like the most requested feature of all time. Uh -oh. um, since many, many years, number one is adding support for tables. Uh, just, just, can, just, I'm on that list. Yes. <laughs> so that is the number one project, uh, like for a few months already, like yeah, since spring already. Uh, it's the number one project. We really focus on that. It's very complex, very large. Uh, we want to do it right. Yeah. We want to have the this best table. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. we, we want to have the best table editor on the platform in our writing app. So that's, that's the challenge, uh, but we're getting there. And yeah, and after that, let's see. I mean, there's, a, there's a multiple directions we're going in. Uh, one thing that I certainly see happening is that we're gonna uh, double down a bit more on the process, like how do people organize their library, add a few more tools, um, um, yeah. To yeah, to 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 make it simpler and easier to navigate and and easier to focus on a project, right? It's easy to focus text right now. Um, it's not that easy to focus on a project if you want to like dig into your book or blog or something. So that is something we'll yeah double down on. Wow, sounds like something to look forward to. Um, I certainly look forward to it. And Max, thanks so much for joining me today. I learned a lot. It was fantastic talking to you. Thank you for having me. Bye bye.